Hello everyone, welcome back to Barcast TV. Today we have another episode of Mastering the Early Game. For those of you who don't know, we analyze top level players opens on specific maps and analyze really like where they're placing their radars, what build orders they're going for, how they're expanding, what unit compositions they're going for. So pretty much everything you need to know to get into the mid game in a decent position. So that's what we're gonna do here. So let's get into the replay. Today we're going to be analyzing Teddy's Open on Crystallized Plains. This was taken from the Alpha Championship Cup, and I believe he won this map, so should be a good one to analyze here. Let me adjust the sound just a little bit. Uh, so one thing to note about this map, actually, is that this first mech here is actually worth um, 5, plus 5 per tick, so definitely um, a little bit stronger than your typical mechs on a... Uh, on other starting maps, so it allows you to kind of stay inside of this little main plateau here for a little bit longer. So I'm just going to pause the replay for just a second here and take a look. Normally we see players, you know, go four wind turbines, five wind turbines before factory, but um, Teddy's opted to go for the three wind turbines, so just really something to note. And notice the positioning on this bot lab too. He has it tucked up against the edge of this cliff, so I, I don't know if units can kind of sneak past that and get to the right of it. But it is m more forward than, you know, anywhere else. I mean, he could have very well constructed that somewhere back here or over here. But he decided to place it as far forward as he could and tucked up against this little plateau cliff here on the side. So pretty interesting position. Definitely different from uh, what I see a lot of players do. You know, three, two max, three max opens and two, you know, four or five wind turbines. So something a little different here. I'm wondering if that's because our wind speed is a little higher than average, so he's able to adjust his open accordingly. So, goes for the bot lab. Let's see, starts a construction bot first, and we'll take a look at you know the order the the order of these units as they come out. So he notices he's good on power and finishes his fourth wind turbine and just starts assisting the factory. He's gonna get this construction bot out, and as his power starts to diminish, stops assisting the factory with the commander. Adds on another wind turbine. So pretty good play here so far. And looks like we went construction bot, grunt, construction bot. And we'll take a look at how he's expanding with those. Now, notice, of course, in recent episodes, we never really cover what's going on with these uh, attacking units, so to speak. And I promise I'll make an episode of you guys where we just cover, like, unit movements and positioning and stuff like that. So um, looks like I'll pause the replay here. Average wind speeds drop below 10, so that caused Teddy to... Um, Add a solar collector here. Um, you might not have to do this in your own games, but just something to be aware of. Uh, you know, you have to adjust your power economy according to this wind speed here. So if you're relying on these wind turbines and you notice this wind is dropping a little bit, Teddy was smart enough to try to add on this little solar collector here to balance his economy so he doesn't stall on his production. So looks like we've got a construction bot grunt, construction bot. And both of these are assisting this... Um, bot lab here and looks like he's taking a walk with this commander so i'm assuming his commander is going to be walking down here and capping these two mexes and he's left this build power on the plateau to assist this uh assist this factory and looks like we have a third construction bot on the way out so pretty interesting just getting as much build power as you can yeah so we have two assisting and before teddy decides to go back down to this plateau he's just going to add on another wind turbine and he started a light laser tower. He had the mass to produce that, but notice this wind is continuing to drop and he didn't want to stall his economy. So it looks like he's just using one of those construction bots to finish constructing that. And it's gonna be trying to cap this mech down here. So I'll pause the replay again and just take a look at where we're at. We're two minutes in the game. Let's back it up a couple seconds and just assume that, okay, so your commander is opening build order. He went next. Three wind turbines into a bot lab, made two more wind turbines, solar collector, two more wind turbines, and starts expanding to this left side of the left side of the base. And we can already see the additional orders he has queued up with his commander. So just comes down here, goes. I think that's Max LLT Max. We'll take a look and figure out the order of that. But notice that he's still adding on wind turbines instead of assisting his factory, right? So he he knows that. He doesn't have the energy or doesn't have the power income to support one, two, three, four, uh, four construction bots and a factory. 
So he's adding on extra wind power with two of these construction bots. So a really nice job balancing his economy. You can see actually how low, how perfectly balanced this all is. Now, of course, this is based off of, you know, the win, but you're going to be dealing with this in your own games. So you really want to pay attention if you're using these wind turbines for your source of power income. You have to balance this properly, and uh, I'll unpause the replay here. So he has one of these construction bots. We have one grunt on the board so far, and it made three construction bots. We have more grunts on the way. I'm assuming he's going to be making a few more of these now that we have so much build power on the map. And this is great. Finally getting the radar up about 2 minutes and 18 seconds. I didn't quite see exactly when he puts that down. He's finishing this laser tower in the back. So let's take a look at this position, though. So this is pretty smart. Turn this music down just a hair so let's talk about how defensible this position is where where he put this laser tower uh, this is just so smart so we can take a look at the range of attack on this laser tower it covers the back side of his main right so this area is covered here by the light laser tower this area but by the shape of the map this is defended already your opponent can't traverse this with any units right so got these two parts taken care of the output of our factory is here so i'll say that's going to protect this whole area here and then we have our commander on the left side so just completely protecting of course this is you know the only real vulnerability is this path here but look how far your opponent has to go to get around that to get to that point undiscovered right assuming he doesn't he misses his radar you have to come all the way around here and into the back right so not ideal you're just giving your opponent say if uh, mighty sheep chose to run all the way around to get into this little crevice right here you're giving your opponent so much more time to construct units and get you know another llt up on the board there's one constructing here we have grunts coming out of the factory so the more time you spend avoiding the vision and um radar of your opponent the more time you're giving them to construct units basically to have them in defense have them in position to defend against your attack right so this is such a great starting spot such a great radar positioning here up on the cliff this is so natural here you can easily build it he didn't have to move anywhere with his construction bot and this llt perfectly defends any run bys from the left side of the main so really good unit placement wouldn't expect anything less from you know one of the top players here so just continue on with the replay and it looks like teddy capped these two mexes and then decided to add on this light laser tower with his commander so of course in the spirit of these replays going to stop it around you know 20 mass per tick and if you all like these kind of videos just please consider liking subscribing it really lets me know what kind of content to focus on and if y'all are a new player please uh, drop a comment let me know how long you've been playing bar it helps me know how to um how to tailor these videos to your all's uh, experience and knowledge level to rts's so we're just continuing to make these run production we have i think this one on the other side of the board got cleaned up but we still just have these three construction bots um adding on a construction turret in the main base. So really wants to emphasize that build power. Teddy notices he was a little bit stalling on energy here. So he just kind of, as he's walking with his commander, adds on another wind turbine. And before he left this position here, added on a solar collector. And still this wind isn't Quaker co cooperating, sitting underneath 10 per tick. So just a really good job of balancing his power economy with his build power relative to the wind. So great job. Looks like finally we have a construction gang moving on to the right side of the board after this construction turret finish. And this is something I actually kind of mess up with my own play is leave it, moving your build power out of your main base without having a way to produce units. So just great job making this construction turret. So while he's moving out with these expanding engineers, and this is something I haven't seen before, actually, he's got three, three construction bots uh, adding on this expansion here to the right side of his main. Still has a decent amount of build power in the main base. And if you hold space, you can actually take out the unit, take a look at the unit statistics card. And we can see these construction turrets have a build power of 200, whereas construction bots have a build power of 80. And your commander, I believe it's 200. No, 300 build power. So you definitely want to be able to match that build power. And notice how, well, this is 200 and we've moved, you know, 240 out of the main base. So not completely... Not completely replacing it, so to speak, but it can definitely respond to anything he needs. If he needs units out of here, if he needs to add on extra extra buildings or power, he can definitely assist that with this construction bot. So 
Good job leaving build power in the main base if you're focusing on expanding with your commander even. So kind of a rule of thumb, I'd, I'd say, is make sure you have build power in your base. This early in the game, of course, uh, if you're expanding with your engineer and commander. So I'll pause the replay, um, just make a little bit of a comment. Notice how this radar position gives Teddy the insight. Uh, we have this run by on the right side and really kind of want to match. Ideally, you'd want to have four grunts, but he moves these three guns into position and kind of notice where uh, where he's moved them to, actually. So you can hold shift and see. I think it's shift. Uh, we can see where these units are going, and it's really kind of to intercept these locations. He isn't going to the position they are now with these grunts. He's moving towards where they want to be. So there's definitely something to note. You need to get ahead of these units that are running by. Otherwise, I mean, they can, everything can move and shoot and uh, bar. So you want to be able to get ahead of these. A little engagement here on the right side, but I don't want to focus too much on that. And still, there's more units, four units. So Teddy's just continuing to uh, reinforce his position and trying to get in front of and ahead of this run by here. So he doesn't want that to get to his base. And look at the pathing, though. He knows the vulnerability. He doesn't want to attack directly into this main base. And he's just going around the side trying to find damage. So good job. Teddy's still getting ahead of this. And let's look at this little expansion gang here. We have. I think this is kind of risky, but it is pretty cool. He, you can get up these expansions so quickly, and he's going to be adding on an LOT. We can take a look at how fast that actually goes up. But I'll pause the replay and take a look at the timestamp. It's 4 minutes, 30 seconds into the match, we'll say. We're sitting at about 21, in, uh, 21 power income per tick. We just have this one radar in our main base giving us ample, uh, ample information. We have... Two expansions completed so far by our commander, supported by one LLT. And we have four construction bots on the board. Three of them, three of which are expanding on the right side, of, and one of which is still in the main base, assisting our factory. So pretty cool to see. Um, definitely using this mass pretty pretty well. He only has 300 in the bank. That's not completely ideal. I mean, ideally, this would be like at 10, and you'd have your economy perfectly balanced, but, you know, it's... Not the biggest of deals just turned on these extra two maxes so he needs to find a way and this is something y'all can incorporate in your own play is like as you're adding as you're increasing your economy you need to be increasing your build power to to spend it so definitely something to note i think it's something like four mass per one construction bond is like a general rule of thumb so and we can see it looks like teddy was just finishing this one llt with these two construction bots oh made a mistake he wants to finish it with this third so gonna comment on how we split one on split one of these off to uh, expand to this right side even farther. But yeah, still has this construction gang, three construction bots. Looks like some of the observers is drawing on the board. Three construction bots on the light right side isn't focusing on expanding to the left. And I think we might be getting close to just pausing this replay or ending the replay, so to speak. So looks like we have another construction turret going off, and that's cute. Um, Teddy actually just started it with this engineer and is finishing it with the uh, original construction turret and is just adding on a wind farm. So notice is that he just wants to have one dedicated build power to just at increasing this power. Increasing this power, you know, f for a long amount of time, so to speak, just, you know, one, one construction by constantly adding on wind turbines. He has three expanding engineers on the right side. Decent amount of grunts on the board. We have two more raiders put up so it looks like teddy's commander after uh, capping this little expansion here is continuing to walk comes down this avenue here between those two ridges adds on one radar here that's a little more forward position gives great coverage of the left side of the board and even more of the middle side and it continues to walk forward and adds on an even more forward radar so just really emphasizing this radar position he wants to see where his opponent's at and we can see this is actually kind of a dangerous position his commander is almost to the middle of the board and has units on the right side, left side, and the front side of them. So pretty cool to see. Uh, just really wants to protect that. So he adds a radar and has a decent amount of grunts standing next to his commander. So he doesn't want to lose his commander so early five minutes in the game and is finally adding on an even more forward LLT. So really wants to lock down his half of the board. I think, uh, wondering if should we should move any farther. I don't want to comment on when he's taking this left side, but really the 
the rub in the story here is these three this three construction bot expansion gang that is capping these mexes and adding on LLTs very quickly. So take a look at the actual order in which he's constructing these. So sometimes you'll see players actually go LLT LLT first and then take the mexes. And it looks like Teddy's opting to go for the capping these mexes first and then adding two LLTs. And notice this forward position here. So units are going to be moving through these choke points here, and he has these LLTs attack range covering these uh, co covering the uh, the lanes these units can move through. So pretty cool to see. Not sure I turned on the spectator list. Let me turn that off. Okay. Um, I th think that's close to ending it. I don't want to spend too much time. Uh, of course, we'll make a video sometime in the future analyzing more of the mid-game decisions these players but in the spirit of mastering the early game i think this is pretty sufficient we can take a look at how well teddy was able to balance his economy as he's expanding with his engineers and commander and how much build power he's left into the base what unit composition it's you know he's playing core so it's just grunts and construction bots in this early part of the game you need these units these these grunts to move quickly and respond to your opponent's own grunts ticks and pawns right so you need to be able to match their movement speed this early on in the game you don't need that fighting power of the you know centurions or the the thugs these light light um what are these light plasma bots so you don't really need the standing pa standing power of these units so early on in the game you just need to emphasize the mobility because really the name of the game is protecting these expanding engineers and protecting your expansions right so take a look at the unit position here it looks like he's teddy's moving even more grunts to the center here so i'm not sure if he's really anticipating an attack here in the center by his commander but i mean we're five minutes in the game and you know 20 grunts around your commander he's gonna go down and you don't want to lose lose a game that fast so pretty cool to see i uh, just really wants to lock up this middle of the board and i think i'll end it here i mean if y'all want to see more replays like this um let me know and I'll let this uh, run out for you all so we can take a look at how this game actually finishes. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.